Why are you sat on Boston? Let him be, mate. Let him be. Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. I hope you, 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 you are well. Today is a very special video. Just because I'm going to do what I want. My video today, in fact, most videos are mine. I just let you control me. That sounds wrong. It's my birthday on Saturday. I'm uploading this on Thursday. So I thought I would do my dream cake and that might surprise you. In fact, when it comes to dream cake, any cake is good, right? That's if someone's giving you cake, you take it, you accept it. But for me, this might surprise you because my dream cake is quite simply just a very basic chocolate fudge cake. I don't know why. Hopefully I'm not uh, the only one. Maybe one of you, if you can let me know down below, uh, agrees with me. And as it's my birthday on Saturday, I thought I'm going to make just a very simple uh, chocolate fudge cake. But we're going to do it 10 tiers high. Look, I've already made eight of them over there last night. It's a very simple uh, recipe, my favorite chocolate sponge mixture. All the recipe ingredients are downstairs, downstairs, down below on the website. And before we do get started, a massive thank you. The one pot pasta recipe somehow got trending, and I think it still is on YouTube. And I don't know how or what happened with that, um, but that's good. So thank you. I've always wanted to be trendy and I knew it was getting in trend because all sort of people that don't understand the whole concept of my channel were sort of leaving comments going, Ew, <laughs> call yourself a chef. I'm like, I'm not a chef. I'm a virgin in the kitchen. Chocolate cake. If you want to get me anything for my birthday, pre-order my new book. Thanks very much. Actually got to number one on the pre-order charts uh, on Amazon.com because it's finally out in the US now. This is a mixing bowl that I've just washed. We're going to go six ounces of sugar. This is very simple to follow. You'll see why in a minute. Six ounces of butter at room temperature. Look how droopy that is. Save a little bit for greasing your tins. We're going to electric whisk it, cream it together. <laughs> Boom. Now I normally do that by hand, we like to show you that, but uh, as it's my birthday, I'm being lazy today. Actually, also because it's my birthday, do you know what would be cool? If you all make this chocolate cake recipe, don't make it 10 tiers, just like one or two, and then it'll all feel like we're making my birthday cake together. Oh yeah. All right, three eggs, which also weigh roughly six ounces. I feel if we all did make my birthday cake, it would be like, that guy from Matilda would be well jealous. Even though I haven't seen that movie, I'm just trying to be in trend. Here we go. These bits on the sides trying to escape, make sure you push them right down, get them in the bowl too. This is uh, another six ounces or 175 grams of flour. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder, give it some rise. And let's just uh, fold it all in using a spatula. Oh yeah, I love that term fold. Something I should do a lot more of a wash day. Just tend to just bung my t-shirts in a drawer and then whip them straight on. Speaking of t-shirts, I'm actually um, bringing out some uh, My Virgin Kitchen themed food pun t-shirts very, very soon, which you'll start to see me wearing in videos going forward. Great thing about a spatula, you can sort of get right under the bottom of the bowl and lift it all up to make sure there's no flour, just trying to hide there going, hey, I'm hiding down here, he hasn't found me yet. Just scrape right round. Oh yeah. Little disclaimer, flour doesn't actually talk, but just give me some slack, you know, it's my birthday. All right. So with the cakey mixture all done down there, I've now got the kettle, you can probably hear it in the background, it's just boiling up because we're going to put our cocoa powder in there. Mixing it to make a little pasty thing can help it be a little bit more moist. Yep, so um, 40 grams of cocoa powder, which is so expensive, this stuff. I don't know why it's so expensive. And what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of boiling water at a time. Uh, it's going to thicken up immediately. Look at that. It's not even going to look like it's gone in there. Um, but we want to make just a, a relatively thick paste. So a little bit more. It's normally about five tablespoons or so. See, that's making it cling a bit more now. It's good. And it smells so chocolatey. Just do it in little batches like I'm doing here because there we go. We want kind of like that, that pasty texture like that. You don't want it to be too wet, okay? You don't want it to affect the consistency of your cake because baking is all about science, folks, which is why I've never really been that comfortable about it. I kind of need a Doc Brown sidekick. Oh, on the gadget video, speaking of Doc Brown, someone actually did a Photoshop, a lot of you did, uh, of Back to Future posters. And um, here's two of my favorites right there. I particularly like the Doc Brown uh, Amy version with the wig. There we go, so like a sort of putty kind of texture. Nice. While we're here, might as well just uh, grease our tins. So just a little bit, just to hold that paper down and around the sides. Wah, 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 wah. Two grease tins, all right. So we have got this thick, clumpy paste. Look at that. Ugh, I'm gonna try and dollop it in one go. <laughs> Lush. 
All I'm gonna do is whisk this through with my whisky thing. You can do this with a spatula too, but it does take a lot of elbow grease. Look at that color, stonking. And stonking will be one of the t-shirts that I get. So pushing this down on the bowl. Wah, 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 wah. Loving the marble effect on it, actually. You just wanna make sure that all of the uh, yellowy stuff, that's the technical term, is blended in with the chocolatey goodness. One more time. Boom chicka wow wow, it's done. Right folks, so I have now put the cake mixture cha -ching, into uh, the tins. You can actually be really over the top and weigh the tins. Mrs. Barry likes to do that, but you can do it by eye like that, okay? It's going in the oven for 20 minutes to bake, and I'm just gonna chill while they bake. It's been 20 minutes, our cakes are cooked through. I know this because we've done eight already, but if you wanna make sure, put a toothpick through it, make sure that it comes out clean. We're gonna get it on a wire rack now to cool down. They're pretty butch cakes, they hold themselves together, but uh, we have to let them cool down fully now. Homer is uh, just keeping his eye on those cakes, as you can see. Cheers, mate. Uh, so they take a little while to cool down, but the good thing is about making all the other ones, which are over there, uh, the good thing about that is we can now make our very simple buttercream filling. I'm gonna be super lazy for this step. We're gonna use a good old stand mixer. We've got a kilo of chocolate, a kilo of butter at room temperature, and a kilo of icing sugar, also known as confectioner's sugar. First thing we'll do is melt the chocolate up in the microwave, there. So that's going in, boom. A lot of love for the uh, microwave gadgets on the last gadget video, thanks for that. I think you've helped them uh, achieve their target, especially the toasty. Uh, 30 second blast, stirring it in between. Oh my God. I think I've left tin foil in there. Ah, yes, look, that little piece of tin foil. Ah, oh, wow. Don't do that. That's also why you take your lids off the Nutella. You know when I tell you guys about that? does that as well. Make sure you get, if you're not gonna warm Nutella up, make it super spreadable. So 30 seconds out, just mix it about a little bit. And I'll keep doing that. Because it's such a large amount of chocolate, it might take several minutes until we've got a nice smooth chocolate. Let's just show you the best thing ever. Oh yeah, shiny. Any Moana fans out there, nice melted chocolate. We're just gonna let it cool down while we work on creaming together the icing sugar and butter. So I'm literally gonna push in blocks of the butter. Uh, come on now, don't be shy. I'm gonna start to open my ice and sugar bag, but first of all, we will beat the uh, butter to get it nice and softened. That'll do. And now I'm gonna gradually add in the ice and sugar, trying not to create a huge vortex of uh, snowy icing sugar. Don't even know if that made sense. So maybe like, a quarter at a time, 250 grams. This could go everywhere. Hopefully it won't. <laughs> Nearly there now. Remember to scrape the sides as well. Woo! All right, last little batch. We got a little bit of icing sugar. And I think there's a cover I could have put on it as well. So I'm actually stood over by the living room right now and I'm just letting that whiz away and really cream it up. I just gave that a heck of a blast to get it nice and smooth. Now we chuck in the chocolate. I don't want to say this is optional, but if you just wanted a standard buttercream, oh my gosh. All the chocolate. Down this goes, boom. Nice low setting. Oh. Just a little scrapey scrapey of the bowl. Do this a couple of times, it is already looking absolutely gorgeous. I'm loving that chocolate shine. Can you see? You bring it up right from the bottom and you're getting this marbly effect, which is pretty cool. But um, no, we want it all whipped through. Boston's lurking in the background. I could do that all day. Unfortunately, well actually fortunately, it's going on our cake. As I stand here observing that Amazing buttercream. I actually mixed it through four times, okay, because there was a still butter hiding at the bottom. Make sure you do that. It's so smooth and spreadable now. It wouldn't be a Barry birthday cake without a little surprise. Now, here's a little thing you didn't know about me. When it comes to chocolate cakes, I like a little bit of jam in between the layers of the sponge. It just gives it a little bit of, mm. I'm going for strawberry jam. So this is some strawberry jam, and I've got about one and a half tablespoons of water. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I nearly missed. I'm gonna bung that in the microwave for about 30 seconds. 
30 seconds just to loosen it up and I'll spread every layer with the pastry brush. What did you just say? That's amazing. That's amazing. The, you... kid, the kids aren't here so someone's got to lick the spoon. You should be making my birthday cake for me. Here's your day off work day. I am. Yeah, she... work. The girls really want to make you one. Yeah, this is my on-screen birthday cake, but the kids are making me a pug one, I hope. I say that, it will just be like a sponge, but hey, it's all good. 30 seconds in there just to warm it through, and then we'll build this thing. We've just been having a whale of a time behind the scenes on my uh, Snapchat and the Instagram story, but anyhow, um, cho -ching, I'm going to use this cake stand. We're just going to build it and see how it goes, all right? So we'll sit this sponge on there, and hopefully uh, that will grip it, act as a bit of a glue, all the cakes have been leveled off. I haven't got a cake leveling gadget yet. I think I'm being sent one, which is cool, but um, I just did it with a knife. So there's my jam on my pastry brush and we're not going to soak it in this. It's literally just a small layer. All right, that'll do. And now our buttercream. So in that goes, oh my gosh. I'm not going to go too thick with it because I think the weight is probably going to try and squish a lot of it out. So the less of it there is, if it's just quite a thinnish layer, Hopefully it won't droop and spill out, but we could always go for that look, I suppose. And I could just spread it around the sides and go, oh yeah, I meant to do that. And down goes tier number two. <laughs> I'm just gonna repeat this layers. And a buttercream. And that's it. I'm gonna keep going like this and see how we get on. stop in a minute just in case it gets too heavy. layer and this one I'm not rounding off the top because I want to kind of get that domey look like that oh my gosh are you all right are you okay does it, it look stable looks like I want to like shove it on some sort of big Turkish kebab cooker thing but wow so a little bit of jam on top to finish I'm being really gentle because it's so wobbly and some more of that buttercream I'm going to pile this up a little bit actually do you know what? This looks so good now. I'm half tempted to just coat. I've got so much buttercream left. I am tempted to just decorate the whole of it with it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Sort of just lifting it up like that, giving it some meringue spikes. You know what? I am actually going to leave it uh, like that. I was going to coat it, but then it wouldn't give you the effect of all the different layers. I'm going to just finish it with some sprinkles and a birthday candle. Some people say why. I say why not? I am pleasantly surprised that this hasn't broken. Uh, the buttercream will firm up a little bit as well uh, as the chocolate sets a little bit there. But let's get the sprinkles on. We're going all out. <laughs> oh man. Yes. <laughs> Way. <laughs> right, I've got to tidy up the bottom. This is a bit messy down there. Happy birthday to me. Just one candle because I'm like 56 this year. Amazing. You know what? I ain't going to put it on a cake stand. That will 100% fall over. Let's try and take some sort of slice out of it. A cake this big needs a chopping board for a plate. To be fair, that cut through really, really well. Always keep your knife sharp, folks. You know, if this works, it's going to inspire some sort of, oh my gosh, it's buried in the 10 layer cake challenge. Don't do that. All right. You're better than that. For safety, I'm going to use a spatula to lift it. Oh my gosh. Come on. <laughs> yes. Ah. Ah. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh, wow. Look at that. All right. It's kind of gone a bit uneven, but. <laughs> 
in case you're wondering, I'm going to share with this with at least one other person. All right, just taking a little wedge in the end. Oh my word, that was absolutely stonking. Such simplicity. I know you're probably thinking, Barry, what your favourite cake should be something bonkers. Bonoffi pie is quite close to that, but I just love a classic cake. Super easy buttercream, the jam running through it as well. So I've got two birthday wishes. Well, apart from pre-ordering the book if you want. One is that you try uh, this cake. You don't have to go as high as that. Maybe two stories high and tag it. Maybe like hashtag Barry's birthday cake if you want. It's up to you. I love to see all your attempts. You're sending me loads on Twitter and Instagram. It's really cool to see. And my second birthday wish is fingers crossed that I don't actually have to work on my actual birthday um, doing some of the kitchen renovations for the new studio, which I am so, so excited about. Live streams, cook-alongs, you're going to love it. So cheers, guys. Happy birthday to me and you whenever your birthday is. There's a one in three, six, five chance of hitting that, unless you're the queen. Oi, someone say the queen. Happy birthday, Barry. I'm allowed to have two birthdays. I wear cool hats.